Good morning, YouTube. This is WackMed19 bringing you a vlog, and you're going to see a lot more of these on gaming channels because of the copyright enforcement tactics that YouTube has decided to change, or not to change, but to enforce, and the way that they're enforcing them just recently. Now, the the content that gamers bring you mostly is third-party content these these games are made by in the case of call of duty uh, like activision activision blizzard in the case of uh battlefield 4 ea owns that i think dice owns that game uh previous games at ea anyway these companies make these games and even though the multiplayer experience is custom and and built to what what you make it and therefore I would say that it it's your own. You've done something on your own with it. Then it, it it still doesn't matter what you are seeing is made by someone else. And YouTube has gone about enforcing a third party claim on on games and games that are put onto YouTube for those companies, like those companies wanted it. And the thing, the truth is. Those companies didn't want the third party claims to go through. There are people that make well over six figures, well over a hundred thousand dollars a year making video games video game videos for you to watch. And you know that's cool. Whatever. They bring you good content and, and we're gonna talk about how that may suffer here shortly. It's fine if YouTube wants to enact third party uh copyright infringement type uh, problems it's not cool that it's going to affect everyone because getting a hold of activision and getting permission for a small channel to get started is not available it's it's very difficult to do like i have searched and searched and searched and can't even figure out how to contact these people to write them a letter to get permission to use their stuff in in that avenue so i go through other channels but those channels aren't good enough for YouTube. Uh, having networks are is not good enough for YouTube. And the networks used to take care of minor third party. They, they, well, my, what the network did was say, hey, we've secured these permissions. Leave my people alone. And that was cool. That was the protection that you got from being in a network. That, that was the, the major benefit from being partnered with a network. So that's not their anymore if you look at some of these people with over a million subs over two million subs they're getting email after email after email that says that they can't put their content up anymore they look at videos they've had up for years that have been okay and all of a sudden youtube is coming down cracking down on them and that's not okay so there's the background that is the background on what it is uh that's going on this is not cool uh for the games to be taken down without the permission or without the instruction from the game companies to do so, it's kind of YouTube over exercising authority. Is it their authority? Sure, that's fine. But embargoes are the way that these game manufacturers controlled the market. They put up embargoes and said, you know, until this date, you can't, you can't release any of, of our gameplay, if, even if you have the game. Uh, there's cutscenes that you still can't release. They will take them down. The, the, the game developers take those down and they enforce their, their copyright law protection just like they have the right to do and just like they should if they don't want you to do to, to display for your own personal gain their content. But YouTube is overstepping their bounds and it's going to hurt quality. It's going to hurt quality because if I was making six figures a year, $150,000 or something a year, just to make YouTube videos for you guys, they'd have graphics, they'd have, you know, soundtracks. I'd have my own soundtrack. It'd have uh, all kinds of stuff. I'd spend all day, every day that I work, working on making the best quality video, making sure that all my information was spot on correct, citing sources and leaving them in the in the description for you to read them. And you have content creators that go through and do things like that. They, maybe not to that grandiose extent, but they, they like Drifter breaks down the code of the game. He finds the information to bring you his in-depth series. T. Martin goes out of his way to find 
uh, information from the developers of the games to give them to you early. There are content creators out there that go above and beyond because they have 24 hours a day to do that and to find that kind of thing and then to make a video for you to watch. If they have to get a job, a real job, doing something else for eight hours a day at that job, plus an hour travel each way, possibly, plus the hour that they want to take to themselves because of whatever, you've just cut out 13, no, you've cut out 11 hours of that day so that they're not making videos in those 11 hours. Plus, when they get home from their job, they're not going to make that quality of video, the, co the, the kind of video you've become accustomed to seeing. It has nothing to do with the color correction. It has nothing to do with the quick graphics that go up in some cases. The words that go over the screen are incredibly easy to do. And it, it's, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the effort that comes from before you ever hit the record button. That quality will suffer. Being prepared for your video, that quality will suffer because you've spent so much time preparing for something else in your day. You're pushing buttons at work or, or whatever it is that you do, scooping fries, I don't know. So when it's no longer your full-time job to make YouTube videos, the YouTube video quality will suffer. It has to by necessity because you're just simply not putting in the same amount of time. It's not possible to put in 12 hours a day making videos, 12 hours a day at work, and any more time doing anything else. And you, do, and you left out that someone has to sleep in there somewhere. And no personal life. I love making videos for you guys. I've never gotten paid for it. Uh, one day I may get paid for it. I, I don't upload as regularly as these people do because I don't get paid for it. And it takes a lot of my day to go to work. And my family also gets their deserved time with me before these videos get made. And that's the way it should be. And that's the way it's going to continue to be. And until I start making mega bucks off of doing this, it's the way it's going to be. And that can't change family first always in everything you do family first the last part is that i don't understand why youtube is doing this the you can every every youtuber that's at the very bottom level like me knows that the market is oversaturated with people who are at the very bottom level like me i am part of the problem not the solution and every ad you see on my channel takes away from the ad that you could have been watching from someone else's channel. If there were only 10 channels, then they'd all make a lot more money. However, let's talk about that surface area. I've got people that just watch me because I'm me and I'm really awesome. It's just the way it is. It's the truth of the matter. But they just watch me. I love those people. But YouTube's making money off of them. And if I stop making YouTube videos, then YouTube will stop making the money off of them. So if you unsaturate the market, the viewership will go down. And if I didn't have to spend so much time researching videos like this one, my viewership for viewing other videos, it would go down. And so that's another loss of ad revenue, which is how YouTube makes most of its money. So if you unsaturate the market, you lose money there too. And if you're going to make it that hard for these channels to put out tons and tons of, of videos, you're going to make it make less money in the long run. I don't understand this business move by YouTube. I think it's a fluke. I think it's a, a passing fancy if you will. And I think that someone important at the big gaming industry company, big game gaming in, uh, companies will be making phone calls saying, you're making our people mad. We sell a bunch of games to a bunch of people who like to do a bunch of things with them. Leave them alone. If that phone call happens, we'll go back to something like it used to be. 
But until then, as I saw on Twitter, the money tree just got chopped down for a lot of people. And, you know, that that's terrible. If you have a YouTuber out there that you really like, and they are completely devastated by this, and they're affected in an uber-major, ultra way, like their full-time job just got hurt, support them. Let them know that you care for them, and that, that you really do enjoy their content. And understand whenever their content takes a day off, or whenever their videos have less of the really cool graphics or whenever their intros last longer than they really should and when they're played out because they're they're having some major considerations if you've never been in a struggle for a job to keep a job or or thinking that you may have to go find a new job then you may not understand it's a scary time for a lot of people so support them however you can Hope you found this video informative. It may change tomorrow based on what YouTube decides to do. It may be like this forever. Thanks. Have a great day.